Hi, everybody. I'm Tamara Zoner. And I'm John Davis. Welcome to Spirit Cafe. Come in, sit down, and grab a cup of love. A Spirituality Without the Guilt podcast. Well, hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Spirit Cafe. We are having one of those wonderful days, one of those great days where things just go awry. <laughs> we, we, we started a, a, a wonderful interview that was going extremely well with someone who has been very patient and, and caring, and uh, someone, namely the man who doesn't have any hair in his head, oh, mainly the man who's on this thing, um, <laughs> <laughs> did, did, not, did not hit record. And so we have to restart again. Um, <laughs> 15 minutes into the, the, the conversation. So this conversation is, is me restarting with a recording. So, uh, and so before I go any further, let me real quick introduce my co-host, the, the, the lady of love herself, the woman of whimsy, the female of fun, <laughs> my, my, my co-host, Miss Tamara Zoner. Hello, Tamara Zoner. How are you? Hi, John. I'm highly amused. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm highly amused and mildly annoyed. <laughs> so. Hey, it's okay. Everything oh. happens for you, not to you. This was meant to be. Right. Yeah. And it's it's okay. It's okay to, to realize that you know that something went wrong, but you and you can go, well, that's annoying, but and you move it on. So yeah, that's okay. Well, yeah. it has been an amazing conversation we've had with our <laughs> guests today. I really wish our audience could have heard it. Um, <laughs> so why don't you, why don't you introduce her again and let's dive right in. <laughs> okay. Well, see, it'll be even better what you missed. You didn't miss because you'll hear now. And so I want to welcome Nancy Picard to Spirit Cafe. She is a certified integrative coach through the Ford Institute. That's her primary coaching model. It seems through our, our conversation so far, but she's also a shadow coach an empowered parent coach, a current coach, a healing your heart coach, leadership, and some other things. Plus, which I didn't mention the first time around, uh, the author of Bigger, Better, Braver, Conquer Your Fears, Embrace Your Courage, and Transform Your Life. But the thing that stood out to me in Nancy's bio is actually that uh, in 2017, at the age of 61, which is still quite young, but not like a spring chicken, uh, she climbed Kilimanjaro on her own. And I felt like that is so inspiring, especially with what Nancy does, helping people to step out of fear and into bigger versions of themselves. So welcome to the show, Nancy. We'd love to hear a little bit from you. What's your story? What got you on this path? Hello. Hi, thanks for having me, guys. Um, what got me on this path was actually I found that my life was not working the way I wanted it to, right? I had been married 26 years, very happily. And when that fell apart, I fell apart. I didn't have the tools to understand what happened, why it happened. I was did not feel safe alone, which by the way is one of was one of my was my big shadow belief. And you know, we could go into that later. But um so I just was trying to fix that picture and fix that picture. And you know, I dated a lot of men and I just I didn't know what I wanted. I'd been married, you know, most of my life. And then I was in, later on, I was engaged. I'd moved to Colorado and I was living with a guy and he started to have his own emotional big break and we broke up. And then I thought, oh God, there's something here. The universe wants me to learn that I am not learning. And I really, I can't be here again. Like I cannot do this a third time. Some people can, but I just <laughs> did not want to do it. <laughs> not going to mention any names, John. <laughs> not mention any names, John. <laughs> I just didn't want to do it. And I knew that there was something that the universe wanted me to know. So I actually got, I, I read the book by Debbie Ford called A Spiritual Divorce that I highly recommend to anybody who's going through a breakup. Doesn't have to be a divorce. And then I decided that's what I wanted to do. Like I had not worked in nine years. I used to own a personal training gym and then I moved to Colorado and all I did was play. You know, I did fundraisers and stuff like that, but I really wasn't utilizing my gifts or my abilities. I wasn't living as big as I could. And so it sort of all came together at the same time that I needed to do more and be more 
and give back more and that I was wasting my gifts. So that's basically, and then everything else was just the evolution. I mean, I never planned on writing a book that wasn't part of what I was going to do, even though every coach I know writes a book, right? Some <laughs> sort of a book. But then when I was going to climb Kilimanjaro was because I was turning 60 and I thought, oh my God, such an ugly number. But I have to prove to myself, I've still got it. Like, you know, you still got it, girl. You can still do hard things. So I was, and because I was a trainer, I really knew how to train. I knew how to, I'm a holistic lifestyle coach. I knew how to eat well and what supplements and all of that. I started to write a book about that, about how to be an older, an elderly, an older woman. I, I can't figure out a way to say it without making me sound so old, but an older woman <laughs> who who was right, doing this because I didn't, I couldn't find any books on it. And, you know, there are a lot of things like going to the bathroom every five minutes, you're doing this, you're doing this, like you're sleeping outside. But then I realized that, um, no, that's not the book. Like who's going to read that book? 10 people. And so I switched it around to this how to, you know, how to live your life bigger, better and braver right. and the steps to do it. Just like I talked to my clients about, this way, if you can't afford a coach, you could pick up my book and and go through, read the whole book and then go through all the exercises and the internal processes and everything that are in the book so that you too could be bigger, better and braver. Wow. Wow. And yeah, I, I, the reason you couldn't write that first book is because there's no way in hell that you're 60. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you're you're obviously in your in your in your you know late 20s early 30s possibly thank you <laughs> you, you look fantastic my 42 um, year old son would disagree but thank you. <laughs> well, but of course he looks like he's 90s but it's okay right. <laughs> um, um i i love that i love this story i love the story for lots of reasons one um people often look at where they are in life and they have this experience of, Oh, I'm 60. I'm, you know, I'm two years away from 60 right now myself. And so I'm like, Oh yeah, I could be 60, but I feel like a 10 year old. <laughs> you know, I feel like someone who's yeah. still got such great wonder and looking at the world in such big ways. And to me, it's, it's that number is so interesting that people start to define themselves in certain ways by what society says they should define mm -hmm. themselves as. Do you find that in your work as a coach that you're often breaking people out of their paradigms from their subconscious. I am. And also one of the cool things about being a coach is, who lives that way is that everything else is an excuse. Mm. So it's really hard for my clients to say, oh, I'm too old. It's not my time. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I did it. Mm. You know, I used to, when I was a trainer, <clears throat> The guys used to say, oh, I can't lift that. And I'd be like, really? Because I can. And, right. <laughs> I, you know, it's the same kind of thing. So I think if you live by example and you live your life in integrity and you do what you say and you say what you do, that makes a great coach because yeah. then that that ups the levels up all the players. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. You know, when you when you shine your light so bright that others notice you become the example and then you they have a, 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 a light to follow. And yeah. I think that uh, that's what a coach really does is awaken them to the light within themselves. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you're obviously a great example because you're, you know, you're climbing Kilimanjaro and all that. Um, and I love the fact that you, tr you, you transition from um, I, you know, an older, uh, I'm an older woman and how to go, you know, do this to into, how are we make a bigger, better life? Because it, it breaks out of that age paradigm, which, mm -hmm. which I think it debilitates so many people. Yeah, I agree. And I don't think, I don't think about my age. I mean, I'm sort of like you, I still feel like I'm a kid, right? right. right. I have an older sister who I swear to God was always a woman. You know, <laughs> she dresses like a woman. She's always been a woman. And I swear <laughs> I'm still a kid. You know, right, I, right. I dress like I'm a kid and I feel like I'm a kid. It's just some partly it's just your your makeup, your mentality, who right. you are and how you show up. Right. But I think when people come to me, they're all living in their excuses. And so you have to have compassion for them 
You have to figure out where they came from, which are all those disempowering beliefs. You have to see their own self-sabotaging pattern, how they made it, what's the beliefs that are under it, what are the fears that are under it, what are their go-to sabotaging triggers, so you can help them bypass all of that noise. And with a coach who's holding them accountable, whether they want to make steps or not, they have to. Because I don't know about you guys, but like if my clients don't follow through on what they say they're going to do, I can't work with you. It's like right. silly. Yep. It's right. it's boring. It's not fun. It's like pulling teeth. Right. And I, I don't do it. I actually will let them go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's brilliant. Same. There's no point in working with someone who's not willing to do the work. We right. can keep people accountable, but, but we can't do the work for them. Right. We can only work as hard as they can. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Now, I, I come, of course, I come from everything from a very, very spiritual bent. And I know you're you, you're using spirituality and, and meditation in your your way of uh, working with it. How do you tie that into your work? Well, it's interesting. When I first do the discovery call, um, I ask them, they don't have to have a, a they don't have to be a, a huge spiritual belief system but they have to be open to the idea that there's a greater force that's supporting them. Mm -hmm. Because you know that when you start to do the work and you look for examples of the universe supporting you, you get showered with examples, Mm -hmm. like just showered. So as long as they're open to the understanding of that, it within a week or two, they're coming back and saying, Oh my God, I can't believe this happened. Like, you know, I thought this and then this happened and I saw this and then this happened. And so Mm -hmm. it's not hard to get them on board. But if they actually say to me right from the get go, oh, that's not me. I'm an atheist. I don't believe in anything, blah, 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 blah. I say, we're not going to be a good fit because every session of mine is building on that spiritual belief and understanding. Right. And and, you know, it's a, uh, there's an old Buddhist quote, um, let me sort of remember it. Those clinging to perceptions and views wander the world offending people. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and yeah, it's true. And it, it's true. You know, if they get so stuck in their own beliefs that they're not willing to open up to, you know, what you just said, you know, you, you need to believe there's something bigger, then then they're just and the, the story of the atheist to me is, is interesting was because I had an atheist who walked into my my front room here and saw my bookshelf and he, he read looked at my bookshelf and says let's never have a conversation about this stuff because i'll show you exactly how wrong you are <laughs> and <right? laughs> and i just started laughing because i was like boy you're so close you're you can't see a broader universe <laughs> right <laughs> you right. know and i i think that you have to overcome those those belief systems and i and i think that but when you have a client who doesn't want to break out of their paradigm and they're clinging on to their perceptions and views that um, that they end up being a, someone who will never find uh, the bigger, brighter future that you're talking about. Right. They're very closed. They're very black and white. Yeah. Which yeah. is, you know, they're so, in the adaptive child. Like, I don't know if you're familiar with Terry Real. He's a relationship I, coach. He's fabulous. Um, but he talks about the wounded child and then the adaptive child who is the wounded child that's learned to adapt, right? And then the adult conscious mind. And the adaptive child is basically the the, the one who shows up in every single fight you've ever had. So when mm. you and your partner are fighting, it's adaptive child to adaptive child. Nobody steps out to the conscious adult mind and says, oh, wait, I don't really want to fight. Like, why am I being triggered here? How can I see this differently? What can I do differently? And... um one of the signs of being an adaptive child is they're very black and white. They see no gray where the conscious adult mind can see gray. Right. Right. I, I, I appreciate that. I, cause I, w- one of the things I've been teaching my son, he just turned 18. And um, when w- he, he gave me one of my greatest compliments about two, three weeks ago, he says, you know, John, he, he didn't say dad, he's dad. <laughs> John, he said, dad. He said, you know, dad, he says, he says, um, my best friend Jude and I, have nothing in common, but we're really good friends. And he says, and that's because you showed us how to be friends. And 
I remember years ago them getting into an argument and me going out there and sitting kind of above the argument and saying, see, when you said this, it just escalated him because now he's defensive. Right. And I kind of explained the process of, of defensive and escalation and, and all that. And they, they have had a great friendship ever since. And then I heard him actually stop a fight between two other kids using the exact same words. So I was like, great. I knew I had done something. You've done and, something right. Right. And, and to me, that, that, that's kind of um, the adaptive child and all that, you know, I think, do you, do you think as a, as a child, they have uh, some, well, I guess, I guess I would say it this way. Do some children have more wisdom as a young age? You said, you said you're, your sister was a woman from a young age or something. Do you think some yeah, people are wiser? Was she never played with dolls. She was like, she she came out like a businesswoman. <laughs> um, <laughs> she may listen to this. She listens to some of them. She's really <laughs> one of my best cheerleaders, I have to say. Yeah, um, awesome. I think that, well, it's really interesting because I have four grandchildren and I just, they're all different, but one of them is like an old soul. I mean, she says things that come out of her mouth that are just unbelievable. Yeah. So yeah. I do think that there's obviously you're born with some of, of that. Yeah. My, my, my son, when his hormones kicked and he lost most of his wisdom. Um, right. <laughs> um, but when he was six years old, he said, God is in everything and everyone. And we control the God part inside of us. Wow. And I was like, who the hell are you and who's your father? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, th I, th I do think that there's, there is an innate wisdom. And I think children, when they cross over from the beginning, they have a, uh, they're closer to the source because they were just there. Right. And now they, they kind of lose it as they're here in this, in this world. But anyways, I don't want to go off on that tangent. <laughs> I, I like that tangent though. It's a good one. Cause I, I, yeah. too, you know, out of my three kids, one of them is an old soul. The oh, other really? two, they are much younger. Oh, yeah. When my oldest was eight, uh, it was when I was going through my big transformation, right? And and trying hard to be a better version of myself and stop yelling at my kids and stop taking mm -hmm. my anger with my husband out on them. And one time she saw me struggling and she just touched my arm and said, Mommy, let's go outside. The energy's better out there. Oh, oh wow. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh my gosh, who is this wise little child? Wow. <laughs> Always, she's just so much older than she is. Even at wow. Santa, that's so she funny. Lost that that's so funny. Deep connection to something. She doesn't even say she knows what it is. Yeah. It's just, she has a wisdom that most people don't come in with. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. how my that's how my one granddaughter was. She was three, I think. Three or four, because I was still taking her to the bathroom. I mean, she was she went, but Anyway, so she gets off the potty and I'm like, Kaya, did you go? And she said, yeah, I peed. And I said, really? Because I don't see any color. She said, well, I pee white. And I said, really? I pee yellow. And she said, well, Nana, you're not drinking enough water. <laughs> 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 right? I'm like, I guess you're right, Kaya. <laughs> <So> <laughs> Smart kid, amazing. Uh, yeah. That's my niece's name. So Kaya? she. So she mm -hmm. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. There's so not a lot so of she took down there. the fitness coach. That's good. She took it down, <laughs> right? She's like, all right, I, I'll get it together here. <laughs> so, what do you what do you love most about coaching? Oh God, I love when people get these aha moments, like when they mm. uncover a belief that's been holding them stuck that they don't even know they had. And now they get to make a new empowering belief and let it go. I yeah. love that. I love yeah. that. Um, people, you know, people who come to coaches, they're psychologically healthy, but they want to change. Yeah. And so watching them get what they wanted and make the changes that they wanted is like, there isn't a better, you know, job out there. Right. It's a great job. And you get to know them so well and they get to know you so well because you, you you coach from what you know, you know, you coach from the scar, not the wound. Right. Oh, yeah. And um, you so you make such great friendships with all these people and you're happy to let them go. You know, there's always this like part where they don't want to go and you don't want to lose them. And I'm like. I'm here. Call me anytime. We can pick up again. And sometimes we'll you know, I have clients that will come in and out over years 
in and out, you know, when something comes up, they'll think, oh, I thought I could do it by myself, but I need another series. And so I just love it. I love the people I work with. I think if I don't really enjoy somebody, I won't re-up them again. But so most of the time, I really enjoy all of my clients. Mm, beautiful. Beautiful. What would you so, say is your, sorry, John, your, uh, your typical client, who do, who do you work with? <laughs> I have a couple of different groups. I have the 30 something biological clock ticking. They want a partner. They want to get married. They want to have a baby. They don't trust their voice. They don't have confidence. And those are my favorite mm -hmm. because they basically stay with me in and out of relationships and then they all get married and they all have babies. And I just like love that. So that's one of my big groups. And then I have a lot of, you know, 50, 60 year old transition out of the house. What are we going to do now? A bunch of CEOs that are just not passionate about their job anymore and they don't know how to let go of the money. Mm -hmm. Um, I have some young men that are just adrift, like they just, their parents want them to do it. And um, there's a great book called Boys Adrift. If you guys ever have those kinds of clients, it's phenomenal. And it really explains what's going on with that generation, the 20 year old boys mm -hmm. of today. Phenomenal. Um, Do you know who the author of that is out of curiosity? Um. I, I can find it. Don't I'm worry. At my books. He's a doctor. Dr. Lawrence something. All right. He's that, got I, that's boys enough. adrift. He's got girls on the edge. Um, that's, but the that's, girls that usually that's come good to enough me. That's for a yeah. Google search. <laughs> yeah, you'll find it. You'll find it. Boys adr adrift. And I think it's like Dr. Larry Zach or something. Okay. Um, I wish I did know it because I recommend it to everyone. So you <laughs> think that information would stick in my head, but it doesn't. <laughs> Um, so it, it's, it's varied. I've had 83 year old woman. I had an 88 year old man who lost his wife and didn't know how to move on, you know? So I get a lot of divorce. I've gotten a few around death and, um, unfortunately I get a lot of estrangement too, mm. which is so hard. It is very, very so, difficult. So hard. Yeah. Cause I get the, the elderly parent that's been left, you know, mm. I don't have the 30 or 40 year old child that has discarded the over controlling parent and feels like I just don't, I, I'm out, you're out. Right. And that's right. so sad. I mean, we can all imagine. Yeah. I have also run into a lot of that in my work. Yeah. That's um, so sad. I yeah, do have a good book for that too. <laughs> Rules of estrangement. Rules of estrangement, right? I, yeah. My pen is out. Joshua <laughs> great title. Joshua Coleman. Joshua I Coleman. I think I don't have the boys adrift because I listen to it on. I do most of my oh, yeah. stuff on uh, Audible. Yeah. Well, you are you are a a, a plethora of of good material. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, you are great. Welcome. So so you and Tamara have have a lot in common because you're both very much about empowerment and and leading people to happier lives. So. Um, I think it's really, I think it's really fascinating. I, I'm, I'm more about the spiritual journey than, than the, the empowerment side of it. Um, that's kind of my focus, but I think that, I think that it, the, the bridge that you gap is, or is, you know, the everyday connection and the everyday empowerment and, and working your way through a world, which tells you um, in some regards that it can be a tough world. And, I find one of the biggest things that I deal with with clients is their belief that growth equals struggle or struggle mm -hmm. equals growth. I mean, mm -hmm. and um, when I break them out of the concept of believing in struggle and believing in present moment action and, and seeing small, small changes rather than the giant big result happening all at once, mm -hmm. um, then I find that I, I get really successful outcomes. Do you find that you have to get them very present moment? Oh, totally. I have, I do a whole series about getting them out of autopilot and working on incompletions, all right. the things that weigh heavy that you haven't finished that are on your to-do list or, you know, 
re broken relationships, broken promises. You kind of got to get all that out of the way so that you can clear the area and then work on what needs to be working, work, worked on. Mm -hmm. And lately, a lot of people come to me um, for my boundary coaching. And what, what is that's what really, is boundary coaching? Well, I'm a certified boundary coach, and um, <laughs> of, of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's Nancy Levin. That's who I. That's who I, I. I mentor with now. So she's got like five books out, and each book comes with a certification. Oh. So her book is called um, "Setting Healthy Boundaries Will Set You Free," and it's all about making yourself a priority, self care. No is a complete sentence, mm -hmm. only saying yes when you mean yes, and then working with a, a, a with a, a boundary script. So it's about you. I feel X when you do Y. Would you be willing to do Z? I feel very disrespected when you talk over me in a Zoom call. Would you be willing to wait till I'm done talking? Mm. Or, you know... I feel disrespected when you leave the dishes in the sink. Would you be willing to just put them in the dishwasher? And then you have to have a plan B, you know, in order to honor and respect myself. If you don't, this is what I'm going to do. And, you know, they get trickier. You can have a, a client whose husband drinks too much and she makes a she makes the request that he stop at two drinks and they say yes and then they don't. Mm -hmm. And then you say to to honor and respect myself, the next time you have more than two drinks, I'm sleeping in the guest room. And then you have to follow through because nobody can cross your boundaries but you. You can set a boundary, but you're the only one that can keep that boundary. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I think that's such important work because boundaries, especially for women or very giving men, uh, can be one of the biggest challenges to, to happiness. And it's actually an area that I cover as well in happiness, because we talk mm -hmm. about the, the seventh main area of happiness is your garden, your relationships, mm -hmm. and how do you cultivate that? And being able to say yes to yourself and lovingly no to others is a yes. vital part yeah. of creating a happier life. Mm -hmm. right. And women, not all women, but all not, not, not all, <laughs> not men. <laughs> How's that? Um, we're people <laughs> pleasers. We're conflict avoiders. And what I try to tell my clients too is that conflict avoiders always cause conflict. Mm. Always. Because they push it down, they push it down, they push it down, and then they explode so inappropriately that people are looking at them like, oh, yeah. all I did was this. like Because they don't know that there's a whole history that's been building up and building up till it pops. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of stuff you teach in, in boundary work. And it starts with setting healthy boundaries with you. Yes. You know, what's the most self honoring thing you can do for yourself every single day. Ask yourself that when you wake up in the morning, that's a great pop you out of autopilot and get you mindful, which is where this last conversation, I think started. Yeah. Ask yourself questions like that. Right, right. I, 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 when I look at what you're saying, I, I take it from the, the concept of, of ego. Ego meaning self awareness, not not the modern mm -hmm. version of narcissism, which is what they now say. Ego, ego simply means self awareness, and you can be on in, be very aware, and then you can also be so aware of yourself that you exclude others, and so aware of others that you exclude yourself and you get out of balance and you come to the, what you're talking about is coming back to the balance where you, where you love yourself as equally as you would love anybody else. Right. And, and I think that that balance is where, where people thrive. And I think that once they get out of that balance, they end up, you know, harming themselves or others. Yeah. And I think that those of us who are people pleasers have shadow beliefs that are like love and life means putting everyone before yourself or my needs don't matter or my opinions don't matter. So if you think your needs don't matter or your opinions don't matter, you will never set healthy boundaries. Those right. beliefs until they're uncovered will keep you from being able to set a healthy boundary. Right. So that's where the work starts. Mm -hmm. 
But that, yeah, that's the selfless side of this that I was just talking about. It's the, the people pleasers are the ones who give so much of the give up of themselves. But the interesting thing about what you're, you're, what you just discussed was uh, a, a people pleaser or someone who avoids conflict and, and someone who thrives in conflict. You know, just the avoidance itself is a conflict for that person. Mm-hmm. You know, because they want the conflict. Yeah, yeah. And so or, it, it, or they had clients that actually believe. I've had clients that believe that without their drama, people wouldn't want to know them. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, we get, and that's because as a right? child, we they're like stuff. the only girl in a family of boys and they became like the Sarah, Sarah Bernhardt. Right. And so if they weren't in some sort of drama, nobody gave them any attention. Oh, wow. But here they are, 60 years old, and people are so sick of all of their drama. Right. And they don't see, because that's the thing about these beliefs, is that they're formed to keep us safe as a child. Mm-hmm. But as an adult, they keep us small. Right, right. It's very different. Well, th- this has been an amazing conversation that could go on for hours and hours, but we've, <laughs> fi- we've actually finally hit the real amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> um so so why don't you tell us how 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 people find you how people get a hold of you how people learn more about you and your work so my website has everything nancy picard lifecoach.com i think you have all my information correct we do nancy it'll picard, be life coach. underneath this thing <laughs> yeah and i'm on nancy picard life coach on facebook and instagram and linkedin and um, I give a free discovery call for anybody who's interested. I have a free chapter in my link. Uh, you'll, you have that also, I think. And I also have a new course that's out on Gen Connect You for women in business on how to be bigger, better, braver, how to set healthy boundaries in the office and blah, 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 blah. And there's a 20% coupon for that also. <laughs> I like the use my of- own stuff. I like the, I like the use of blah 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 blah. We we, <laughs> we, we call God yada yada. yada, yada. Yeah. God consciousness go. universe whatever yada yada right. So um, yeah. So uh, Tamara, anything you'd like to say before we close this thing out? Just thank you, Nancy, so much for being here um, and for not letting circumstances hold you back. And we appreciate it. It's been a really wonderful talk. I can't wait to stalk you on social media. Oh, good. (laughs) I'll stalk you too. Follow me. I'll follow you guys both back. Very good. And and maybe we'll have you back again and have another conversation. I'd love it. I'd love it. This was really fun. You guys have great energy. You ask great questions. There's good give and take. So, um, Good, Next good, time we'll just start it from the beginning. Healthy yeah, balance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we'll hit re- we'll hit record early. Before I even get on. Okay. Great. Well, All thank right. you so much. Thank Nancy. you guys. I- I'm Take gonna care. send us out of here. Uh, and actually, actually, uh, my co-host is gonna send us out of here. I am. All yeah. right. Oh, I usually do. I opened today. It was confusing for me. <laughs> I mean, I didn't open, but I intro. All right. Well, thank you. As usual, you know how much we appreciate you viewers and listeners, and we'd love to hear from you. What was your biggest aha moment in this conversation? What resonated with you and got you thinking or feeling? And what are you letting hold you back that maybe you'd be willing after this to break on through? Either way, to, come back to next the week. other side. <laughs> Take on to the other. Sorry. Sorry. Off on a tangent. All right. We will talk to you next week. Can't wait to have you back with us. Bye. Thank you for joining us at Spirit Cafe, a place where you can safely explore your spirituality without the guilt or dogma of religion. Please leave all comments on the Spirit Cafe podcast Facebook page or beneath our videos on YouTube.